Greetings, uh, my friends, on the occasion of India Inclusion Summit 2020, Resilient Me. We've had the pleasure of listening to Kailash Satyartiji, a pride of the country, the inspirational story of Mansi, and Neha, who I have had the privilege uh, to meet. And my endeavor will be to try and put together the thoughts expressed by these three wonderful, inspirational human beings to set the tone for this year's Inclusion Summit. When we speak of special needs, special people, special children, particularly in this month, which is the International Month for Children, it is also the International Adoption Month, a question comes to my mind, what chances does a child with disability have to get adopted? Kailashji spoke about the systemic responsibility and challenges that we have to meet the requirements of the vast majority of children who are excluded by virtue of the vulnerable circumstances that they come from. Mansi spoke about the challenges that occur when you are rendered disabled due to a quirk of fate and Neha shared with us the large story and the personal narrative of mental illness as it affects thee. So the world of disability is vast. And in this context, if you were really to look at it from the perspective of child rights, there is a tendency, my friends, to look at child rights predominantly from the lens of rights violation. But that's a limited way of looking at the whole issue of child rights. What about the context of rights enablement? The right to education is one such law. Let's look at it from another perspective. And that is from the perspective of child protection risks. And here again, you will recall that both Kailaji and, and Neha referred to the whole issue of abuse and exploitation as the context of mental health morbidity and as the context of experiences that children face when they come from vulnerable and difficult circumstances. But there is another angle to protection risks, and that angle is the risk of unmet developmental needs. And to close this triangle is the whole issue of inclusion and exclusion, as the case may be, an idea, a phenomena, a reality that all of us have been contending with, and a reality that the entire team which has set up this summit in its ninth year today preoccupies itself with. And then the whole wellness and mental health agenda. Going back to something that Mansi said, look at the entire reality that this framework has occurred in. One, the reality of COVID-19. We must appreciate and understand, friends, that pandemics of the nature of COVID have a disproportionate impact on the most vulnerable. For people with disability, one might argue, when you uh, speak about distancing, whether a lack of mobility, and I'm not referring just to locomotor uh, issues, perhaps even to social mobility issues, would it actually be of their benefit? Or is it, if you go back to the whole child protection risk, the risk of unmet developmental needs, and for many of these children and individuals who have mobility issues, would, they, they be, would this be something akin to almost like a lockdown within a lockdown, particularly with schools closed, special education centers closed, and this has also occurred in the context of the new education policy, the national education policy of 2020. 
And I must share with you that the national education policy as a document is a very complex document to navigate with. But there are two very striking features here, or may I say three. One is the emphasis on disability, the emphasis on education, and the emphasis on wellness and mental health. It is in this context that in the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, where uh, I work, we have started a national initiative and integrated resource for child protection, mental health and psychosocial care, through which we dream and hope to work with the health, education and welfare sectors with all stakeholders and service providers to reach any child, every child in the spaces that she occupies and inhabits. We will thus be working with school boards, schools, teachers, childcare institution and their staff, child welfare committees, juvenile justice boards, the judiciary at the state and national level, legal services authority, police academies, administrative academies, the district mental health program, tertiary care hospitals, in extensive programs of capacity building and training so that the gap that Neha referred to and the enormous challenge of numbers that Kailashji referred to and a very critical issue that Mansi referred to when she used two words, resilience and uncertainty. What COVID has done is it has unmasked in all of us a vulnerability known as intolerance of uncertainty. And part of the whole inclusion paradigm is how we ensure that we provide a sense of predictability in a scenario where these children's lives, individuals' lives who have some form of disability is characterized by loss of structure, loss of routine, loss of predictability, loss of educational opportunities, loss of social spaces, loss of peer interaction, and loss of play. And this is where the principles of anthroposophy need to be embraced by all service providers to really meet the inclusion needs to create a resilient me. If children cannot go out into the world, how do you bring the world back? into families, into childcare institutions. This is the spirit and the message that India Inclusion Summit 2020 has for all of us to build a resilient me, resi resilient children, resilient people, creating a solid supportive scaffolding and framework for all the issues and challenges that the illustrious people I've had the privilege of sharing this platform today with, Kailashji, Mansiji, and Nehaji. Good day, my friends. Let's march onwards towards creating these opportunities. And we at the National Institute are at your service, and we are mandated to provide all assistance for stakeholders and service providers to meet the challenge and the gap that has already been referred to. Good day.